Welcome to episode 4 of Cascade Cassette 50 on the Commodore 64. We've got another 10 games to get through today, games 31 to 40. And we expect them to be pretty bad, so let's have a look. So, we're starting strong today with a shit offering straight out of the gate from Phaser. In this game, you're that ball at the top and you have to shoot the advancing wave of aliens through the barriers. However, you kind of have to work taking turns, so if you shoot, nothing can move until the shot's fired. If the alien shoots, nothing can move until the shot's fired. Pretty powerful, of course, because at 50, there's a lot of games where you can move or a projectile can happen, but not at the same time. So, yeah, every time someone's firing, you're completely frozen. Um, this wave of enemies is supposed to be coming towards you. Uh, yeah, it's tedious, boring, and absolute crap. Also, you can't shoot the ones on the right because when you push so far to the right, it pushes you back to the left again for some reason. You probably won't die in this game because you probably won't play it long enough for the slowly advancing wave of enemies to get to the top and kill you. Moving on. And this is Intruder, yet another all expenses spared trip into the world of Cassette 50. On this one you play lazily yet again a ball, he must move around and survive as long as he can. Basically these things are supposed to be man eating multiple weeds, allegedly. And the weeds got me there despite the fact that I had a gap but I wasn't able to move into it. So yeah, buggy as well as cheap shite. So yeah, the idea is keep moving, survive as long as you can without these man eating weeds getting you. And it's just boring. Boring, 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 boring. Yeah. And you can also go off the top of the screen into the scoreboard and beyond, which can net you some cheap points for a while until eventually it randomly decides that the weeds have got you anyway. And that is basically it. That is a full level of excitement of Intruder. See, I'll go into the scoreboard there. Move along, and I think I then even go beyond that and up off the screen and out of there. Yep, off I went. And the score kept mounting up until eventually it just randomly kills me. And that's Intruder. Moving on. Then we have Inferno, where you're supposed to escape from a burning maze. Except it's not really a maze as much as um, inconvenient to place blocks out of mind getting away a little bit. There's no specific exit, so you can just get off the screen, which is not at all challenging. Probably a two year old can manage to beat this game. And also, you may have noticed that it's not on fire. In fact, there's no sign of any kind of fire or any kind of danger or any kind of challenge for this game other than getting to the top of the screen before you die of boredom. And that is it. That is the entire Inferno game. And then you get to the top of the maze and it generates another maze for you. What a bag of shit. Moving on. And this is Ghosts. Not satisfied with just one terrible Pac-Man clone on the tape which is Maze Eater they're now coming out with this this is completely and utterly shameless rip off of Pac-Man except there's only one ghost who's pissed not angry I mean drunk he kind of hovers back and forth um, occasionally he'll come after you sometimes I wonder if I'm confused and other times nope that's just it walks around drunk or walks around confused so yeah, you've got power pills, just like Pac-Man. You look like Pac-Man, and you're shaving away from ghosts. Now, if this game wasn't so shit and pathetic, I think someone may have got sued. But yeah, this kind of rip-off is rife in those days. Um, yeah, it's better than Maze Eater. Just about. So, there is that, but it's still an absolute bag of shit. And definitely not a substitute for the real Pac-Man. 
That's his better substitute for his Harry 2600 version of Pac-Man, to be honest. So, yeah, nothing to see here. Move along. This is submarines. It's shy. I don't think there's any way you can die. You drop bombs on a submarine. If you hit it, you get a point. And it deserves about as much effort reviewing it as it took to make the game. Well, so far, so bad. Five awful games there. One pretty bad shameless rip off of Pac Man. We thought Maze Eater was bad, but nope, they've done an even bigger rip off. It was better than Maze Eater, but almost everything else in the world is better than Maze Eater. So, moving on for the next five. This is Rocky Launch, Cassette 50 sides going to the realms of wargaming. Perhaps it's going to deliver a sophisticated, complicated experience but with tons of depth and replayability. Nah. So you're supposed to sack these cities by typing in the names, pressing certain buttons to attack, except you can't attack all the cities unless it wants you to. It just ignores you and asks you again and again until you press the one it's waiting for, I suppose. And then your plane flies slowly over. And then his attacking progress flashes on the screen and yeah, it's all exciting and radio contact's lost. Is it lost for the enemy base? Is it lost for your plane? I don't think so because your plane's flying back. Does anybody know? Does anybody care? No. No, we don't. Next up is planets where you have 20 missiles to so shoot down 10 UFOs which fly across the screen. You can steer your missile like this and there's a hyperspace button to catch it, but I never bothered with it. And yeah, again, it's not one of those games there. You can't really lose unless you deliberately crash into the ceiling. I think they were supposed to be clouds, but it blows you up if you hit them, so I'm just going to call it a ceiling. So yeah, you have to mess up 10 times to lose, which is not likely. You just keep chasing these UFOs around. They go so fast that sometimes you pass straight through them. There's no guarantee of hitting them. The only guarantee is you're not going to care less whether you hit them or not. Um, yeah, this is it. The skill level just makes UFOs go a bit faster. If you miss the UFOs, they kind of go down the screen a bit. But even if you get to the bottom, there doesn't seem to be any kind of penalty. You just reappear at the top again and carry on. So barely any challenge, barely any playability, just vintage cassette 50. Uh oh, this is Black Hole. That's what it's called anyway, but that suspiciously looks like Snoopy. Oh, hard luck, Snoopy. And the bird's caught Woodstock. I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark that Cascade did not have a license for Snoopy. But here we are. So Snoopy has a jetpack, because of course he does. And he has to fly and catch Woodstock before he falls down the black hole. Plus the title. And get him to the top of the tree again. It's something wild to work out which part of the top of the tree, but yeah, it's the top left. And then you have to avoid these apples, which occasionally home in on you. Because that's what apples do, yeah? We all know that, don't we? Apples are vicious, fruity bastards who are just out to kill these jetpacking dogs. What? But yeah, 8 bit, so you let it slide. Oh, hard luck, Snoopy, yeah. Hard luck when Snoopy solicitors come sniffing around the Cascade offices. Well, except that Cascade have gone long gone, but if they weren't, yeah. Eventually catch up in our culture of suing and more suing. Ooh, just narrowly avoided there by the heat seeking apple. So, yeah. Zero shame and zero quality. It's one of the better games on Cassette 50, but as you see, it's not exactly up against stiff composition. So, yeah, let's move on before we get sued for Snoopy. This game is dynamite and doesn't feature any dynamite as far as I'm aware. Basically, you're a robber and you have to get a safe and take it to your getaway car. But for some reason, the maze is completely black. So you have to guess and remember your way around it. You can look at the map a total of eight times. Well, sometimes it just randomly looks at the map for you, even though you haven't told it to. And yeah, you've got a time limit which counts up instead of down because, you know, logic and all that. Um, yeah, it's very, very boring. It's T 
tedious. And the sound effects will make you want to rip out your own pricking eardrums. It's that bad. Yeah, got to move on from this game now before it sends me completely insane. And the last game of the week is Do Your Sums, which is shockingly about doing your sums. And this game kind of throws you out because you have to do everything in reverse order. You have to put in units, then tens, then hundreds first. Other than that, it's just simple adding up. And it's value dependent on how much you like adding up or taking away. With poor graphics to look at. And as you go along and you get sums correctly, it starts to build up what eventually turns out to be, spoiler alert, a house. And other than that, yeah. A nice piece of turd to top off a turd sandwich for the week. But I think we've all had enough by now. Well, that's 40 games down on Cascade Cassette 50. Only 10 left to go on the last episode, which should be sometime next week. And, yep, the ripples got even more shameless. So, yep, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you for the last one.